Hi everyone, Jessica here from Paper Ink Stamp and welcome back to my channel. So today's video we're going to be using some digital downloads. So these are the paper nesting dolls. You can download these for free from the Craft World website. These cards were kind of advertised in issue 226 of Simply Cards and Paper Craft. As soon as I seen them, I have used them before. I knew I wanted to create a card uh, using them. So I printed all four uh, onto a piece of A4. Well, this is just shy of A4. This is like a US size. Um, so two of the, the bottom ones, um, their feet ended up getting cut off. But I wanted to use this rainbow girl here. So you can see that I've colored the, her in with some Copic markers and then just a fussy cut around her. I'm gonna be creating a larger card today. So this is a seven by seven. And so I'm just showing you kind of the supplies that I'm gonna be using. But halfway through kind of creating this big card, I decided I didn't really like how it was going together. I didn't feel like it was really gelling. And I actually ended up making another card Hard, um, but that's kind of slightly down the line a little bit so please go with me up until that point um, I'm going to be using what I create everything that I create in today's video I am going to be using um, and I just end up with two cards at the end so first of all, I have got uh, a white card base. Again, this is seven by seven. And I've added a piece of, I think this is the Hollow Wave by Craft Perfect. Um, I've popped that layer on already. And then from some yellow cardstock, I think this was the Marigold Yellow. Uh, I'm just using this uh, punch here. So this is a Martha Stewart um, edge punch um, of these really beautiful scallops. This belonged to my nan. I've got quite a few of them from her now. Um, and I thought I wanted to kind of use them um, a little bit more in my crafting, but I thought this would make a really nice kind of border. In the magazine, the cards that are designed have got lots of layers, there's lots of texture, and I think they're so beautiful. And I'm really trying to kind of recreate that in my card today so I'm being probably a little bit awkward with it kind of turning it back and forth and um yeah just trying to get that pattern maybe there's easier ways of doing it but all you need to do is just line up the design parts that you've already cut like you can see I'm doing here now um with the design that is kind of uh, printed but super easy to use I'm not sure how much punches are still really a staple in the craft room anymore because I guess we do have lots of dies and things to kind of substitute it but yeah I've got quite a few of these from my nan and yeah I I would like to be able to use them a little bit more. So I've done the top and bottom. Um, I think this looks really, really great. I was originally just gonna put it on top of this uh, holographic on its own, but I thought it was maybe a little bit too much. So I cut a piece of, I think this is the mauve purple. Uh, so my card base is seven by seven. The holographic layer is six and three quarters squared. The purple is uh, six and a half squared. And then that yellow piece is six and a half again, because I want the width to stay the same. So you're not gonna see that purple on the width, um, but it does of course end up being slightly uh, shorter where I've done then um, that edge design. When I put this on here, you'll see. Um, yeah, and I think it looks really beautiful. So again, just to add some more layers to that, I'm gonna use some foam tape. So I talked in my last video that I had run out of this Scotch foam tape. Uh, so I got another one, it's obviously got delivered. Um, and I think I bought my first roll, I said back at the beginning, of October and it's literally lasted me until February, um, you know, till I ran out. So it's about 35 pound, but I think it's actually really great value for money because it does last a long time. So when I put this on here, you can see the width is staying the same, but you can see that that purple through uh, that sort of scalloped edge. And yeah, I really love how this is looking. Then I wanted to add a piece of patterned paper through the center of this. Um, and the paper that I chose, it came from a magazine and I can't remember for the life of me which one it was. I think it was the Memory Box um, sort of premium craft magazine kits. Um, I did a commission for one and I had the papers, but I got confused whether it was that one or the Newtonic Studio, but I'm pretty sure it was the memory box one. Um, and I thought it was really nice, quite a subtle background. And I thought that kind of teal color went really nicely uh, with the, the yellow and the purple. So uh, finally I trimmed this to the right size. So you've literally got a tiny strip of that yellow uh, and then you've got that lovely yellow scalloped edge. So I'm gonna add this with the glue. Um, so, so far, you know, the only bit of dimension we've got is from that yellow layer but it's really just building up um, lots and layers onto here. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is create a little background piece um, using this frame. I wanted to kind of, um, I wanted to cut out the paper nesting doll girl. I wanted her to kind of be fussy cut, but I wanted to have kind of a layer behind it as well. So I'm going to create one here. So this is the Funky Fossil Designs. I think this is the Slimline Landscape Stencil. You can see on here, um, you've got the uh, cloud section. You've got actual clouds in the center. Then you do have kind of the rolling hill at the bottom uh, and then those um, sort of grass pieces as well so you can use this to build up some good scenery the cardstock that I'm using this is a 300 GSM ink me cardstock from hunky dory um, this is really great it's really really smooth um, great for card bases and things I do use it for that as well but yeah because it's a nice um, smooth cardstock it inks really well onto it uh, so I've just taken a scrap and I've um, already kind of worked out that I know my die is going to fit onto this piece. So rather than kind of fussing around, I'm literally just going to do the design across the whole of this scrap and just cut it down. So I'm just working from the bottom up. You can see I'm taking off some of that ink from my brush because I don't want it to be kind of too harsh. And this is then that final result. So I'm just going to tape this into place and run this through my die cutting machine. So super easy. Just creating layers like this can add some interest. Uh, to your cards and your projects. So a great tip if you don't want to add more kind of mats and layers with something like this, I don't have a die that's bigger than this. So a great way of kind of adding a little bit of depth and making it look like you've got another layer behind it is just to gently ink around the edge. So I'm bring, bringing back in this kind of craft mat. This is from my uh, Tim Holtz uh, glass mat. And I'm just inking, again, I am taking the ink from the ink pad, but you know, I'm, I'm dabbing quite a bit of it off because I don't want anything too harsh. And then I'm just coming in to get that heavier line right on that sort of cut edge and that's just going to help kind of bring your eye into the design and then when we put our doll on top of it it's going to really bring our eye into that so at this point I've obviously put this piece uh, onto here and that's kind of really at the point where I realized maybe this isn't gonna work together quite as well but I'm gonna see it through a little bit further um, just to see whether you know I can make it work or not that the problem was I think is the flowered pattern paper really I guess didn't go with the design that I was kind of looking for this is going to be based kind of around the weather around um, the rainbow something colorful so what I wanted to do was create something really bright and colorful because at the moment here in the UK we've had some really shocking weather I wanted to create something nice and bright so I thought I'll carry on and just sort of really see where it goes. So I've taken another one of the um, Funky Fossil Design stamp sets. I honestly can't remember what this is called. It is a really great stamp set. You've got all of these sort of clouds, you've got raindrops, suns and rainbows, and it's got all of this kind of texture to it as well. It's really beautiful. So I decided to stamp this and I was gonna add it as some extra elements around the card. So I'm just taking some of my Distress inks, one of the textured clouds and then that sunshine as well. So I I've been really really awkward about this I should have just got a regular piece or just done this one at a time because I ended up putting scraps in it was just kind of floating in the middle but because I haven't used the stamps all that much it was bringing up the cardstock so if I wanted to restamp any of them it just didn't end up sort of lining up so I'd recommend not just having things floating in the middle like I have because it really doesn't end up working but the Distress ink colours I used, I think it was Seedless Preserve, uh, Fired Brick, I had, um, I think it was Spiced Marmalade in there, I had Mustard Seed, and I think then this last cloud I used Peacock Feathers. Um, just again to add a little bit of brightness to this, again with those cards whenever I see them in the magazines for um, the Paper Nest Dolls, is they're always bright, usually quite bright, with you know lots of texture, and like I said lots of layers and things, and that was really what I was going for. So I did a fussy cut around these once I'd finished, I'm going to add that centerpiece to the sun, and again then, like I said a couple minutes ago, I was really trying to kind of work this where I thought, you know, I want to have all of these extra elements hanging around and it was just going to build up nicely. I did make that butterfly, but I'm going to use that on the next card. So I'll talk about that then. But I was kind of trying to arrange this. I did think about the sentiments that I wanted to use as well. So I had the perfect sentiment. It was going to read, hey there, sunshine. So we've got hey there, which is in the ultimate big words stamp set. And then we had sunshine came from the ultimate sentiment builder stamp set um which i thought again worked so perfectly with kind of the theme that i was going for but to be honest when i 
like now starting to lay this out I realized it just wasn't going to work with that uh, patterned paper in there so what I decided to do was just create a whole new another card using the elements that I'd already um, cut out and you know my um, background that I created and just kind of recreate this in a different card just to make it work a bit better so I took um, this paper here I'm still not 100% sure that it kind of worked in the end. I'm not really sure what kind of patterned paper that really would have made this work. Um, but I took this one. It was from the same um, paper pack that I got that uh, floral design from. Uh, and this is more like a yellow kind of watercolour background. And I took then a piece of um, like rainbow holographic card uh, from Hunky Dory, I think it is. And so I put this on a five by seven. So I cut all four of these. Um, if you go into like your print settings, and you know if you're trying to cut all uh, sorry print all four of these not cut them if you're trying to print all four of these um you can get it onto one page and you can see here i'm creating a five by seven card obviously the first card base was a seven by seven so they are really big good sizes but of course you can make it smaller if you want to so I wanted to kind of recreate the design that I had on my first card. Um, so I'm using this smaller scallop. So I've got kind of two sizes and I decided to go then with this smaller one. I took the same uh, purple cardstock to go underneath it. So again, virtually the same, just different holographic uh, and then just a different um, sort of yellow background paper. But I didn't add anything across the center like the first one. And this frame actually fitted really nicely in between um, the space. So I've just added that with some glue and I'm going to add then um, my topper, my little girl then, with some of this foam tape. She's going to go on top of that cloudy background. So again, like I said, I was going for kind of a bright, sunny, you know, weather kind of card. So I like how it turned out. Again, I just think maybe the patterned paper, I just couldn't quite find uh, what I wanted to. But I'm just adding these elements just sort of in and around uh, with some glue because she has got her kind of um, rainbow balloon there. And I thought, yeah, just adding some of these other elements would be really nice. For my sentiment, I'm still using the same one, Hey There Sunshine. And I'm going to stamp this onto some green cardstock. I think this was the fern maybe oh no this is the grass green because this is lighter and I thought you know just to pick up some of that green uh, from her dress as well would work quite nicely and then I'm just gonna fussy cut around this so um if you didn't catch my last video my thumbnail was different only because I forgot to take a picture of the card before I sent it off so my thumbnail ended up being different if you did miss that in that video I talk about running a competition um ahead of the release of my two brand new stamp sets uh, so I'm going to be having two winners to receive uh, both of these sets. So go back and check that out. It was to do with the colour throwdown challenge I tried for the first time. Um, and you can enter that competition uh, in the comment section of that video. So go back um, to find my last video. The big word uh, stamps are really easy to cut out because they are quite big and bold. Um, but if the sort of release of this stamp set goes quite well, I am hoping then to release a coordinating die for it just to make things a little bit quicker and easier if you're not um, like me don't particularly like fussy cutting. So I've added some foam tape just to one half and then I'm going to add glue to the other part that's going to kind of overlap um, onto the leg and the dress of our girl. Um, so that's going to go just down here in the left corner uh, and then we're going to add the sunshine just underneath. So the whole point of, you know, I could have edited this down and sort of just had the one card, but I really wanted to show you that sometimes, you know, things don't always go according to plan, like how we kind of plan it in our heads, um, but really just persevere with it, you know, like whether we are making videos for YouTube um, or you're just creating at home, you know, whatever um, kind of crafting you're doing, obviously things don't always work out how you want it to, it doesn't always gel together like I said at the beginning and this was one of those occasions but you know persevere with it end up making another card don't just discard what you've done turn it into something different so now I'm going to show you the second card that I made obviously using our first kind of card base so this was sort of as far as we got with this card um so I did then color and fussy cut out one of the other ones so this girl with the big flower I thought this would go much better with that flowered patterned paper so I did die cut this same sort of shape as I did for the first card from this busier patterned paper, but to be honest, it really, 
I didn't feel like it went very well. I tried to do the same thing I did uh, with our cloud background and just kind of add that color to the edges of it, but I really didn't like it, uh, how it turned out. So what I'm gonna do is cut this scalloped circle uh, from a piece of vellum, and then I am gonna bring in a circle of uh, shimmer cardstock from Hunky Dory, and that's the purple lavender. Uh, I was gonna cut a much bigger circle, but it just turns out in my scrap I had a circle, and I thought, well, it's not the exact size that I wanted, but you know, why waste, you know, more cardstock cutting another size, I might as well just use this. So, you know, again, things don't always happen exactly how we want it to, but persevere with it and see really what comes up um, as your sort of finished result. You might love it even more. I really love this, to be honest, I love this card over the other card. Um, even though the other card was kind of what I was planning to do, yeah, I just ended up liking this so much better. And again, this little girl with the flower worked much better with that um, flowered patterns paper. So I've just glued these two together. I'm only popping the glue um, on the vellum where it's gonna be hidden under that uh, purple circle because otherwise you will see that. Um, and I'm just gonna add that again, like I was going to just on this right hand side. Then I've popped some foam tape again onto the back of this girl just to add a little bit more uh, dimension there and I'm going to pop her on top of that uh, flower as well. I really love colouring these in, they're really great sizes as well um, and it's really great for kind of practising your uh, colouring. Like me, you know, I am still practising with Copic markers and things like that, coming away from the tri-blend markers where it's all kind of done for you. Um, yeah, these are really great sizes for that. So the sentiments I'm picking for this card, I'm going to turn this into a birthday card. So we're going to have wishing you a happy birthday. And I wanted to show you that you can, you know, obviously mix and match these two stamp sets together. But also you can just use the, the big scripts if you want to, the big bold words together. And, you know, obviously I've added a um, sentiment builder stamp here as well. But yeah, you can absolutely just use them uh, individually uh, on their own. So we've got the happy birthday as the big and bold. And then we've got that strip. Uh, wishing you a so I stamped that onto some blossom pink cardstock and I'm just going to add some foam pads to the back of this again just to help let this stand up and again just create more interest more depth and dimension uh, onto the cards and we've got a really lovely space here so I'm gonna I'm not gonna ram this into the corner I'm gonna space this out quite nicely because we do have the space here so the one thing I didn't talk about at the beginning was that butterfly I ended up creating two of these to go on my card. So the um, dies themselves, it was from Hunky Dory. I think it was something like beautiful butterflies or layering butterflies, something like that. I used the holographic paper uh, for the uh, base of this, so that same hollow wave. And then I had more of a coral color on this first one. I did end up creating a second one here and I used that same mauve cardstock that I had in the layer. I kind of wish that I had done both of them in this coral color because I think that might have worked a little bit nice. It would have stood out a little bit more. And I wish I had some smaller butterflies maybe as well just to add to, to it. But I think there's a lot going on. But again, I really actually love how this has turned out. I like to kind of challenge myself a little bit more and have sort of more going on. Uh, on my cards, especially, you know, when I take some inspiration from using um, these kinds of images here. Yeah, I think, I think it really kind of challenges me a little bit more to kind of add more things and more layers. So that is both of my cards. So, you know, again, not really what I started out and my intention was uh, for creating this video. I was just going to use one of them and the card on the right was kind of more what I was planning to have. But it, as it turns out, like I said, I absolutely love that card on the left. So as I said, just go with it. You know, if something doesn't quite go how you want it to go, just persevere, um, see it through. It is only paper and just a few supplies at the end of the day. If it turns out and you don't like it, that's absolutely fine. Just, you know, learn from what you don't like about it and just make the card again. So definitely, definitely go with it. So that is it for this video. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please do so, so you don't miss out on any future videos. So that's it for today. Thanks very much for watching and happy crafting.